Okay, welcome to our first video on oscilloscopes. This is the one sitting at the instructor's station here in Tech 104 at Cal Maritime. And what we're going to do just to familiarize ourselves with the very basic controls of an oscilloscope um, is to feed the output of a function generator, which pr is producing a sine wave, though you can make it do other shapes of waves, square waves and sawtooths and things like that at 200 hertz and to get that to output we've adjusted the frequency knob here you can see that you can scale it up or scale it down in terms of frequency and we've uh, hit this button to highlight the sine wave because we want a sine wave rather than something else okay and we'll be able to adjust our amplitude so the height of the wave of the voltage wave of the voltage signal by adjusting this knob later but that signal comes out on this coaxial cable comes around here and enters the first input of our oscilloscope. You can actually display two inputs, but we're just going to look at the first for starters. And you'll see that we already have something on our screen. Lovely. But it doesn't much look like a sine wave, does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how are we going to fix that? Well, usually if you have display problems, at least the basic ones on an oscilloscope, it just has to do with how you're graphing the data that it's receiving. And the first thing to remember is that the oscilloscope is showing us a graph of voltage versus time. And each one of those little dotted boxes is going to have a certain number of, be a certain number of volts tall, as well as a certain number of seconds wide. And that's going to set the scale of our graph. All the little boxes will, will always have, you know, 10 boxes uh, left to right. We'll always have eight boxes top to bottom, but what we can do is change the scale of those boxes. In other words, oh, it's going to, each box is going to be a volt high, or two volt high, or five volt high, or a half a volt high, or whatever it happens to be, okay? Now, for us, we're expecting a signal that is, has a frequency of about 200 hertz, just a little over. And that means that if we flip that over, so one two hundredth of a second should be the period of one oscillation in voltage. So starting at the axis, going up to a maximum, coming back down to the axis, going down to a minimum, and then coming back to the axis. One complete cycle of voltage. And the reason we're not seeing that kind of full cycle here, just kind of a line, is because our time axis is maladjusted. So if we look here, each that, that indicates that the x-axis, the time axis, each box is only 20 microseconds wide. Okay, that's much, much smaller than a 200th of a second, right? That's 20 times 10 to the negative sixth. So two times 10 to the negative five, that's just not gonna hack it. So we can come over here to all of our buttons and knobs and things, and we can find the horizontal axis. These are the things that are gonna govern the behavior of that and we can find the scale, and we can adjust that by, you'll see the numbers change here. Yeah, that's the wrong way. <laughs> Back the other way. So now each box takes a longer and longer time, and now we've got a steeper line. Let me stop there for a second. Ah, let's go. There we go. Okay. So that now is one millisecond per box. And a two hundredth of a second is, you know, starting to get close to that kind of uh, that kind of kind of time scale. Okay, two hundredth of a second being what five milliseconds. So, anyway, the next thing we need to change though is something to do with the y-axis. Right, we're only seeing a part of the wave. It looks like kind of we're cutting off the tops and bottoms. That comes down to this label right here. It says that uh, channel one is set at 500 millivolts. That's not the height of the wave, that's telling us how tall each one of these little boxes is. So each one is 500 millivolts tall, in other words, a half a volt. Okay, well, if we wanna display the whole wave, then we need to come over here, find our vertical axis buttons, pick out the ones that are associated with input one, get the scale here, come back over here and we adjust it until we can actually see the wave. There we are. Okay. So we can see a couple of periods of oscillation there. That seems pretty good to me. 
and the only question is, is the wave the appropriate height? Okay, our goal here is to display a wave that is one volt from zero up to the top. Just an arbitrary goal, but just to illustrate the basic process here. Okay. Now remember that the, the oscilloscope is just measuring. It's not the thing creating the sine wave. It's just measuring it and displaying it. So if we want a wave that is one volt tall, well, first we need to know how tall this wave is. For, well, let's take a look, let's take a look. Uh, two volts per box. So this thing is from trough to top, like four boxes plus like maybe another half a box or maybe even a full box. But from the very peak to the very trough, it's maybe nine, 10 volts. And we want something that is from zero to the peak, one volt. So from the peak to the trough, so from there to there, we want something that's only two volts tall. All right, well, the oscilloscope can't tell, help us there. We have to come over here and we have to adjust the amplitude, okay? So let's bring the amplitude down, bring the amplitude down, bring the amplitude down. Okay, now we're about four volts tall and we'll get it close. And now uh, we can do it by boxes, but actually um, one of the nice things we can do with a modern oscilloscope like this is to use some measurement options that it builds in. So when you hit that button, measure, what it does is it brings up all of these dialog boxes that you can control with these buttons down here. So if we add a measurement, okay, and gives us a whole bunch of options. So we can scroll through those, frequency, delay, phase, all sorts of good stuff. Ah, now we're starting to get to it. All right, let's go amplitude, sure, okay. Because that's gonna tell us essentially what the peak to the trough, you see the little dotted lines that it puts there, okay. Peak to peak uh, is for more irregular things. See, these should be, for a nice smooth sine wave, essentially equivalent, okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click OK to add measurement, which is just this button that's next to this thing that says OK on it. Ta -da. Okay. And then if we menu off, so it's right here, and we menu off again, we can see that the amplitude of this signal, according to the oscilloscope measuring it, is displayed right here. It's a little jumpy. Okay? It's taking a series of measurements and then trying to, to put them all together. And our scale is not great anymore. It used to be fine, but now we've got kind of a wave that's only taking up a part of our graph, which is generally bad practice. So we go back over, we get our scale button, scale knob rather, for input one. And we expand the X and the scale, sort of zoom in. That one's one too many. This is good. Okay. And we can come back over and adjust our amplitude until we get almost exactly two volts. And that means we would have a one volt from zero up to the peak. It's tough to get it exactly. There we go, 1.98 volts or thereabouts. And that gives us a one volt height from zero to the peak and two volts from the peak to the trough. And that's what we're looking for at 200 hertz. We know that it's at 200 hertz because we have one complete period from zero. Okay, one, two, three, four, five boxes. Each box is one millisecond and one over 200, right? One over frequency is the period of the wave. One over 200 is 0 0.005. In other words, five milliseconds, okay? Now, uh, as a side thing, just one last thing here before we wind up this video, you can go to measurement again and come back over here. You can add your measurement can come over here and you can scroll through all of these things and you can have it measure the frequency directly and display that measurement just in case you don't want to do your counting up the boxes thing and if we go down here the frequency of what's coming in on, on input one is 
or thereabouts hertz, which corresponds really well to what we're saying is outputting from our frequency generator. Okay, so those are the, some of the basics, just adjusting the vertical and horizontal axes of our display so that we can adequately display whatever our signal is. There's lots of subtleties to the oscilloscope. Next time we'll come back and measure uh, an actual circuit, and I'll see you then.